Hi everyone, it's Kate from The Fold Line. I am back this week with the Sew Down. This is our monthly roundup of stuff we've seen, read, listened to, made, bought, all from the world of sewing and that we thought you guys would find interesting as well. So I've got some really good stuff to share with you. Um, first things first, I'm going to start with something I've made, which um, I know most of you, probably the probably a couple of you have just fainted in shock because I haven't made anything for ages. But I was talking about this before Christmas and I just thought I'd show it to you on. So this is the By Hand London Hannah Wrap Dress. Everything that I mention I will pop links down to below so you can go and have a look. Um, I'll pop a link to this. Um, I blooming love this pattern. Um, I was really, really pleased with how it came out. Um, so I'll stand up, I'll do a bit of a twizzle. So it's a wrap dress. Um, it gathers at the side, um, ties at the side, sorry. It's got gathers around the waist and it ties on the inside here. Um, I used the kind of bishop sleeve pattern. Um, the pattern has, um, for this sleeve, has ties and I decided to add elastic rather than ties because I thought it was more practical. I'll end up like dribbling it in my food. <laughs> And um, yeah, it's quite low cut, but um, I think if I, I made the size 12 and it fit me straight out of the packet, I think I might, if I was doing it again, I might go down a size because um, it's quite roomy. Um, but yeah, I really like it. I've worn it loads. So the fabric I've used is, I'll come in with a little. So this is a viscose twill from a company called Mind the Maker. Um, a lot of um, some of the indie patterns sh or indie fabric shops have it. I got mine actually shipped over from Denmark because I couldn't find anywhere in the UK that had it in stock and I really wanted this big kind of leopard print. But I know that um, um, So Me Sunshine stocks it, Lamazi Fabric stocks it. Um, oh God, I can't remember any more people who stock it off the top of my head, but the, it is kicking around. Um, the quality is really beautiful. Um, I really, I mean, I'd really recommend it. It feels really nice. And it, it unlike, you know, most viscose is the kind of cheaper end of the viscose market. It crinkles, it crumples so quickly. This actually doesn't. So it feels basically like I'm wearing pyjamas. And yeah, really, really dig it. So very pleased. Um, right, so I'm going to get started. So I've got a few things to talk to you about. Um, I always start off with um, something I've got kind of that I'm going to sew. I've got um, a couple of indie designers that you may not have heard of. Um, I've got some cool stuff to read, etc, etc. So first things first, I've got, um, this has just arrived in stock and I'm really sorry it has been so delayed. It was with it got lost in the post essentially, um, but we've got the new um, Fibre Mood uh, magazine. So this is issue seven. Um, it is really beautiful. I think I've shown these on here before. They're a French, no, they're not a French, sorry. Um, I can't remember what country they're from. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna move on. Where are they? I can't remember guys, that's really bad. Um, the, obviously the magazine is in English um, and for those who missed it so the cool thing about these is that um, the first half of the magazine is a bit like a lookbook so um, let me show you a kind of good example um, do, do, do. okay so this so they they have pages with the pattern there so you can see it sort of on the model at the bottom there are the line drawings um, and yeah, but there's some really nice stuff. So I think there's about 20 to 25 patterns with each um, magazine. They've got some really nice kids stuff, actually. This I thought was really cool, this little jumpsuit for kids, um, really nice. And then there's one, they've also done it um, in an adult version of it. So you could, you could be matching with your kid if you wanted to. Um, so yeah, they have that at the front. Then they have all, um, so they have a kind of a layout of all the patterns that you get in this issue. Um, the patterns are in the back, you will have to trace them, they are full on Birda, Birda style, they're all overlapped. Not too crazy actually, I have to say, there's only a couple per sheet. And then at the absolute back is um, the instructions. Now the instructions in the magazine are quite basic, you can see here they're just sort of images 
um, not a huge amount of writing, but they have um, a link in the magazine where you can download like written and full written instructions. But I have to say, if you're kind of an um, intermediate sewer, I actually made stuff without using the instructions, I've just followed the pictures, but if you need a bit more help, it is there. So they are now in stock, um, I'll pop link to it so you can go and look at all the patterns because there's some really nice outerwear. Um, actually, let me just quickly, because there's this really amazing coat. How lush is that? Yeah, I totally want to make that. Anyway, that's in stock, so that's quite exciting. Um, Next up, so I'm going to talk to you about two designers that you either might not have heard of or have just arrived or, I th you know, it's nice to share new new people, new stuff. Um, so the first one I'm going to talk to you about is called Homer and Howells. They are a UK-based pattern company. Um, they've only got two patterns out and I'll show you pictures of them so you can see. Um, but I really like them. So the, the women who set it up, they're called Nicola and Susan and they... Um, have worked in the garment industry for I think like 20 years. One of them is a professional pattern cutter and one of them is a garment technologist and anyone who, well a garment technologist having worked in the industry is someone who um, they kind of, they will spec up the drawings so the designer will design what they want, they will draw the technical drawing to send off to the factory, they also quite often will be in charge of getting all the fabrication right, the trim, so it's a really, they're a really important part of the design process which quite often people don't know about. So between them, I mean a very very good pair of people making patterns, some with loads of commercial pattern cutting experience and someone who knows all about fabrications and technical drawings and how things are made. So um, yeah, they they met when they were at college so they've known each other a long time and I really love hearing, I, I, I'm a bit of a nerd, I like the story behind a company. So they launched their first patterns in December and they've got two patterns and they're really nice. I just think particularly I have to say the sissy dress I think would look fantastic on most body types quite loose, boxy, kind of co like a cos vibe to it, which is, you could, and the thing which I think anyone who buys ready to wear cos, it suits a lot of different body shapes. They're just really nice patterns and I think they'll be really interesting to watch as they grow and bring out more patterns and yeah, so if you want to have a look, I'll pop a link so you can go and see their two patterns, but the sissy dress for me gets a little the love heart because I really really like that one. So the next um, company I've got to talk to you about, they are um, much more established, they've been going um, I think about five years but they've just, we've just got them on the site. So they're called Made by Jack's Mum and um, Sarah who runs it um, started it, the company, well she started basically making patterns for her son because she was making, wanted to make him clothes when he was little and so she says that she specialises more in little boys' patterns, but I have to say, looking at it now, I think that's how she started, but definitely there's a real mix. So there's boys, girls, women's and men's. So she does quite a lot of different things. She's got a lot of patterns. So we are currently adding them to the site. I don't think we've got all of them there, but we're on like three pages of patterns, so there's a lot, a lot to look through. Um, the ones that I really love are the Heyday Dungarees. Um, Anyone who reads The Sew Reporter, actually, last week, Zoe had made a really, um, which is so Zoe, um, had made a really beautiful pair and like a rusty linen. Um, they're really nice. I thought they were really fun and definitely like a cool thing to make for summer. But yeah, I'll show you a selection of her patterns so you can see. But yeah, we've just added her to the site and I, um, yeah, I just, I think they're really nice. Um, they're really kind of good basics. I think they've got like, a couple of like like a man's t-shirt, um, nice like hoodies and yeah they're kind of good core basics. Um, yeah so they, she started, I think she started her company in Australia but she's now back in the, living in the UK up in Yorkshire so um, yeah they're worth definitely going and having a look at. Um, now this is a bit of a random segue, um, I got some questions a, a few questions about fl my flowers, which um, <laughs> asking 
whether I get flowers all the time and what they're like and um, so I thought well I'll just tell you so I get them from a company I, I kind of mix and match but occasionally probably about once a month or once every three weeks I get um, flowers from a company called Freddy's Flowers um, they're really nice they're a subscription company they're really they're a small independent business um, and they yeah they deliver them on bikes each week and you can opt to have them as much as you want you could have one every week um, they're not cheap definitely but they are my one real luxury in life I just cut flowers is my thing um, yeah so if you wanted them they're definitely worth having a look at actually now I think about this I think I've got a discount where I can get you guys a free box of them yes I think I do okay so if you like them so every week they just send you really nice and you get about five or six different stems different types of flowers in each one um, I'll pop a link because I think you can get a free box which is definitely so test it out and see if you like it and then um, yeah I, I really like getting them and you can also see what's coming so if you've got because I've got a real thing about really brightly coloured flowers I don't like them so if I can see that a brightly flowered one is coming the next week I just don't get it that week um, so you can really kind of mix and match it um, yes I will find that discount and I will pop it down below if you're interested and want them there yeah they're really nice right um, next up what have we got oh yes so um, sewing event I guess we would put this under um, the stitch festival which is in or next next month in London it's on the 27th of February to the 1st of March at the Business Design Centre which is in Angel um, which anyone who comes into King's Cross which is it's like a couple of stops from there so it's really easy to get to um, this is basically the knitting and stitching show that has rebranded itself as a stitch festival now anyone who has been to that before um, Let's just say that this one is going to be more dressmaking specific. So I know the other ones have been a bit more general craft. And if you're really into dressmaking, not into other things, there's a lot of stuff that might not interest, interest you. But this is going to be much more dressmaking. And we are going to be there. <laughs> so I'm currently buying, I can't even tell you how many sewing patterns I'm buying. It's actually terrifying. Um, I'm hoarding basically all the indie pattern designs from all over the world in my house and we will take them and bring them there so we're going to have loads of cool stuff so we'll definitely be bringing like we're going to bring like the Fibre Mood magazines we'll have loads of indie, indie designers so do come and see us now I have also god I'm like queen of the discount code today so they sent us a discount code if you wanted to come so you can get I think it's £2.50 off your ticket which is quite a decent discount so the code is now let's try and remember this TFL 2020 I will also pop a link down below so if you did want to come and you wanted to get your tickets with a bit of money off which is always great um, just pop that in at the checkout and you get I, don't, I think it's yeah I think it's £2.50 so um, off but it's going to be really good. We are going to be there. Cannot blooming wait. And um, we're actually sharing a stand with So Me Sunshine because we thought it might be a bit fun, a bit more fun to share it with someone else. And then you, so we've got quite a big stand between the two of us, but it means that anyone who wants to buy fabric and patterns in one go, they can because they can come and see our stand and we all have sewing patterns from us. And she's bringing, oh my God, we saw some of the fabric she's bringing. It's so good. So um, yeah, come and see us, book your tickets, it's gonna be fun. Um, next up, I've got some cool stuff to read. Um, so anyone who has been to see Little Women at the cinema, I'm sure a lot of you have, it was wonderful, I loved it, I cried, I can't stop thinking about it. Um, Vogue have just done this really interesting um, article where they interviewed the costume designer uh, uh, for, the, for the film. Really good go and have a read it's really interesting um, how she found all the things um, you know she talked through all the little details and how she came up with the idea and it's just it's a really wonderful read so I would definitely recommend going and having a read of that um, next up for reading I've got um, I've got another really nice article it's called the accidental singer sewing machine revolution um, it's about 
how the sewing machine came to life, about women and it's just it's a really nice it's quite a deep dive because quite often those BBC um, articles are quite short it's it's a good long kind of read um, I found it really interesting and yes Mr Singer didn't sound like a particularly nice man but a good businessman let's say good in business bad in life <laughs> um, yeah he was a bit of philanderer um, but yeah, go and have a read, it's a really, really nice and interesting article. Um, I've got a little um, thing to watch. Um, it's just a sweet little video. It's, um, again, the BBC, it's about this boy in America who is, it's titled Saving Dogs with Bow Ties. Um, he has been making sewing bow ties for rescue dogs um, because they've found that it's really helped actually get them rehomed. Um, it's not very long, it's only a couple of minutes, but it's really nice. Go and have a watch if you feel like you need a little kind of pep me up. Um, next up, I've got a little kind of, uh, what would we call this? Well, let's call this what it is, the sewing bee. Um, I don't have any hardcore news on when it's going to be out. I'm just going to start with that. Um, but they have just pre-released their book. So last year they didn't do a book with the series, which I thought was a bit disappointing, but this year already it is, I think you, let me just have a, I think you can pre-order it now. Um, and the title of this is The Sewing Bee Sustainable Style. So I think this series is going to be much more about sustainability. Um, it's really, I'm really excited. If the book's out, that means it must be coming on TV soon. And um, yeah, you can go and pre-order it. So um, it, I'll pop a link. I think if I do Amazon, that's probably the easiest because it's kind of everyone can get it. And um, you can see inside some a couple of like the projects. So it's yeah, it look it looks like it's going to be good. So that is exciting. Um, podcasts. I have got two for you guys. I know that you guys really dig a podcast. So the first one, um, Rachel got me onto this. Um, so it's called um, Fortunately with Fee and Jane and it is, um, it's, it's basically a conversation between two women. So it is really, uh, so Jane Garvey's on Women's Hour, Fee is a um, journalist within Radio 4, she's and they basically, ha I think they started it almost as a bit of a joke about a year ago um, because a lot of men within the BBC had podcasts and no women did and I think they started it that way but it's this lovely chat between the two of them and they meet every Friday in a coffee shop and they talk about stuff and it's hilarious and once, the topics are always really interesting but also once you get into it it's like listening, it's like having lunch with friends or like a coffee with friends, they are it's really funny, um, I would definitely, it's like really light listening and really enjoyable, so definitely go and check that one out. The next one I've got is, um, it's a another, another Radio 4 um, one, it's almost, it's like a docudrama, so it's partly dramatised, part documentary, it's really good, the only thing I would say about it is the drama part is a little bit, uh it's a bit hammy, but the story is really, really good. So if you want, it's only six episodes, you can bash that out in like a couple of days if you feel like, if you're gonna sew something and you want to listen to something that's quite light listening. Um, it's called The Fake Heiress, and it is story, the story, which is a true story of um, basically a con artist in America last year. She was called Anna Delvey, and she, lived like she was a sort of trust fund, trust a fairy and kid and she didn't have any money, she just conned people out of money, mainly hotels and banks but the story of how she did it is really fascinating, she went on trial in the US last year and she's currently in a high security prison in New York um, it's really good. It's a good little listen, like it's an interesting story and wow, like wild, wild. Um, so yeah, that's definitely worth having a listen to. 
But that is it for me. I have, oh my goodness, I have yabbered on for ages. So I'm gonna let you get back to your weekends. Have a lovely one. Um, I hope you've got your sewing machines out. I'm definitely feeling like I wanna get on and make some stuff now. I've got, I'm excited. Especially with the show coming up, I feel like I'm, I can use that as, you know, a, a deadline. I think I need a deadline, so I'm gonna make some stuff for that. Anyway, see you soon.